All right, hello and welcome to VOP News Update. I'm Moses Humphrey. Some bandits have raided the Ungawan Dankali area of the Zaria local government area of Kaduna State. This resulted in the death of four residents while four others sustained gunshot injuries. The Kaduna State Police Command's public relations officer, Mansu Hassan, who confirmed the incident, said during the attack, operatives rescued five kidnapped victims and arrested one suspected kidnapper. He identified the rescued victims as Alima Musa, Rukaya Salisu, Umi Sadisu, Yusuf Musa, and Aisha Rabiu. The injured, he added, were immediately evacuated to the Muslim Clinic Hospital in the ancient city of Zaria, where doctors on duty confirmed four of the victims dead, while the remaining victims were still receiving treatment at the facility. The demolition of illegal structures and shanties continues today at the Lekki Phase 2 axis of Lagos State. Illegal squatters at Gedegede community have been given seven-day ultimatum to vacate. Commissioner for Environment and Water Resources, Tukumba Wahab, gave the order at the weekend after an inspection tour of drainage channels at Dodden Barracks, Obalinde, Victoria Island, and Lekki Phase 2. Wahab berated his quarters for building on the canals and blocking the path flow of water. The commissioner noted that those committing environmental infractions at Obalinde would be served notices so the place could be put in order. The federal government, through the Universal Basic Education, has secured a grant of $98 million from the Islamic Development Bank to fund bilingual education projects in nine states. The beneficiary states are Adamawa, Boronu, Gombe, Kaduna, Kano, Kwara, Nasarawa, Niger, and Oshun. Adamawa has three bilingual schools, Boronu has three, Gombe has three as well while Kaduna has four, Kanu as well as, well, Kanu has four, uh, Kwara as well as Nasarawa uh, have um, three, Niger has four, and lastly, Oshun has three. The federal government has approved the appointment of doctors, nurses, and other clinical healthcare workers as contract staff after attaining their compulsory retirement age or years. The government, however, noted that the appointment contract, the appointed contract staff will be on the same salary scale level that they retired on if they desire and deserve it. A circular dated October 5 by the Federal Ministry of Health directed the chief executive agencies, chief medical directors, medical directors, and heads of regulatory bodies and schools to ensure compliance with the secular earlier issued by the Office of the Head of the Civil Service of the Federation to all staff in their institutions. The Office of the OHCSF had in a secular dated August 30, 2023, rejected the upward review of the current retirement age of medical and dental consultants and other health professionals from 60 to 70 and 75 respectively. In business, in a bid to stimulate economic growth, worsened by unprecedented rise in prices of goods and services, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, reduced its cash mop-up operation. This was reduced by 82% to 150 billion naira in the nine months ending September 30, 2023, from 830 billion naira in the corresponding period in 2022. As a result, the banking industry enjoyed a 46% increase in average opening balance of idle cash during the period. As part of its money supply management function, the CBN occasionally injects cash into the banking system through the sale or repayment of open market operations, OMO, treasury bills, the CBN sells open market operations, treasury bills to reduce money supply in the economy and with a view to curbing inflation.
But when the CBN wants to increase money supply to spur economic growth, it repays the maturing open market operations, treasury bills with interest. So the banks and the investors. However, it is not clear if the drastic reduction in its cash mop up measures have succeeded in stimulating economic growth over the past nine months as inflation maintains steady upswing while gross domestic product has been sluggish. In the foreign news, the Israel Palestine conflict has taken its toll on the Middle East. While well, no fewer than 1,000 deaths have been recorded on both sides since the Hamas launched a, a surprise attack on Israel at the weekend. Many world leaders condemned the attack, lamenting heavy casualties on both sides. The Israeli government declared war yesterday, giving the green light for significant military steps to retaliate against Hamas for its attack from the Gaza Strip. Israel Defense Forces have launched hash airstrikes on Gaza portending greater fighting ahead as the toll from the conflict increased on both sides. But 24 hours after Hamas launched its incursion, Israeli forces were still trying to crush the last groups of militant fighters holed up in many southern Israel towns. Israel had never witnessed a staggering toll in recent times on a scale the country experienced on Saturday. And that's the news update on VOP TV. We'd like you to subscribe and engage us on YouTube. It's Voice of the People TV. And on other social media channels, we are at VOP TV Live. I am Moses Humphrey. Good morning.